Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I got another Vegas effects tutorial for you. In this one, I'm gonna be showing you how to use the chroma key effect or the plugin that comes with the Vegas effects to get the perfect green key for your footage. Just a heads up, I'm really close to 10,000 subscribers, and once I get there, I'm gonna release a free LUT pack for all of my viewers. Anybody who knows my channel exists will get a free LUT pack. So be sure to hit that subscribe button down there if you haven't already. Now everyone's footage is a little bit different. Everybody's green's not gonna be the same and everybody's frame rate and motion blur is not gonna be the same. So what I'm gonna do is take you through all the steps and then you're gonna be able to pick and choose what works best for your footage. Now typically you wanna follow a few rules to make sure you have the best key possible. And the first one is recording high frame rate, the highest frame rate you can actually. So for the most part, DSLRs can only go up to 60 frames per second for you know the cheaper ones like the one I have. But some DSLRs can go up to 120 frames per second, even more. It's better to record in the highest frame rate possible and then double your shutter speed from the number of your frame rate so if you have like a 60 frames per second footage you want to make sure your shutter speeds at least 120 if you have 120 frames per second make sure your shutter speeds at least 240 that's gonna provide you very very little motion blur if any at all and that's gonna make your key a lot easier Next, if you have a really good camera, maybe like a GH5 or something better than that it can record in 422 chroma subsampling most DSLRs can only record in 420, like my Lumix G7. But if your camera has the ability to go in 422, that makes the colors much sharper and much easier to key, for sure. The next thing is you wanna make sure you have a nice, evenly lit background. And it can be green or blue, doesn't matter, because those are two good colors to key. You wanna to try to avoid any kind of hot spots, which means your light's too close to your screen. But as long as your green screen is pretty even, you're good to go. Wrinkles, you wanna avoid that, but some wrinkles are okay, but some real deep wrinkles, you can see those in the key. And lastly, you wanna be at least six feet, maybe even eight feet in front of your green screen. Because if you stand too close to your green screen, the light's gonna make the green bounce off that and reflect onto you and you're gonna see green kind of wrapping your body and that's gonna make it really hard to key as well so follow as many of those rules as possible and you'll be good to go so without further ado let's jump right into it Okay, so we have Vegas effects loaded up. Let's go ahead and drag and drop in our clip. I'm gonna use the green screen footage I used for my hologram tutorial. Once you drag it into your bin, drag it to your timeline. Now let's navigate the timeline to the part we wanna key out. That looks pretty good here. I'm gonna bring the clip up a little bit. First thing we wanna do is mask out everything around our subject. So I'm gonna go up to the square tool up here. This is the square rectangle mask. Select it. I'm gonna hover my mouse over the video, scroll down once to bring it out a little bit. And then I'm gonna start my mask pretty close to the edge over here. And then in my mask right about here. Give my arms enough room to move around. Now that we got that masked, let's go over to Effects tab. Go up to the Search Effects. Type in Chrome. And we're going to see Chroma Key. Click and drag that onto your clip. And what I like to do, instead of using all the options down here, I like to go to the Controls tab and use all the options here. Whichever clip you have selected, if you go to Controls tab, that's where all the control properties are going to be. We're going to drop down Chroma Key, drop down Matte, and drop down Edge Color. These are the ones we're going to use. We're not going to use anything else. First things first, I always uncheck it so it deactivates the key. Go over to color and I'm going to click and hold the little eyedropper and put it right close to my body. And that's going to be the green I select. Go ahead and reactivate the chroma key and you see it does a perfect key job. All right, we're all done. No, I'm just kidding. So what we're going to do is go down to these options right here. If we go to gain, we're going to drag that one up and down and see what it does. If we drag it up. You're going to see it takes away a lot of the green. So in theory, it's just the strength of the key. I'm actually going to drag that up to five. And we zoom in, we're going to see a lot of pixelation around the edge. And that doesn't look good, but that's okay because we're going to clean that up. Balance, if we drag that one left and right, let's see what that does. It's looking like it expands out the key. We go left and it brings in the key a little bit more to the right. Let's zoom in a little closer to see. That's what balance does. I like to bring balance all the way to one. Hue balance, I keep that at one because that's controlling the range of the color you selected. Pre-blur, if we bring that in, you can see it feathers in your key and that can look really terrible unless you're going for some weird look like that. But pre-blur does help smooth this jaggedness out. I like to bring it up to one. We don't want to correct everything right off the bat. We're going to utilize the rest of these options to correct our key. Looking pretty good so far. So let's keep going down. Clip background. This is basically the threshold. If you bring it up too high, it's going to be going way into your subject. So we don't want to bring it too high. I like to put in mind right about 25. That looks pretty good. You can see it's gotten a lot smoother around our jagged areas. 
but we can still see a greenish border around here too. Next, clip foreground. This is basically the opposite of the deep threshold. This is reducing the clip background and kind of shrinking your range of the key right here. So you can keep that relatively high, but to get the most precise key, you want to bring it down a little bit. I'm going to put mine at 45. Clip rollback. You can see what this does. If you bring this forward, it looks like it rolls in the edges of the key. And we don't want to do that too much. You actually want to do this just a hair. I like to put mine right at one. Gamma. If you bring it to the left all the way, you can see it cuts into our key, but it brings back some jaggedness. And if we bring it too far to the right, it extends out and we see more of the green line. So keeping this at a one is pretty good for me. Erode expand. This is basically cutting into your key, but it's not smoothing it out. You can do this a little bit if you want, but not too much. I actually am not going to use this at all. I'm going to keep it at zero because the rest of the stuff down here can make our key look a little bit cleaner. I don't want to cut into my subject at all. Deposit foreground, if we bring this up, you can see it softens out and pretty much negates the effect of clip background. So I'm going to keep that at zero. Now deposit background, it's pretty much the opposite of it. What it's going to do is cut into your key a little bit, but it's actually going to give us some smoothness. You'll see the jaggedness smooth out if I bring this up. But we don't want to do it too much because, you know, it'll look kind of weird like that. So I'm going to bring it up just to number two. That's going to really smooth it out. So our key's looking pretty good still. But we still see a little bit of the line. We want to get rid of this. We want to make it look like our subject is in whatever situation we're putting them in, not green screened in. We're professionals here. So down to softness, if we bring this up, that's softening the key edge right here. And we want to use this, but not too much. And I'm talking about a very small amount. I like to put mine at 0.25. That softens it just a bit more. And we still see the ring, but it's okay. But our key's looking really, really smooth. So next, edge color. Now edge color is where it takes the remaining border of your green and then colors it in. It subtracts the green out of it, but it'll add red to it if you bring it all the way to 100%. That kind of looks weird. Let's bring it over here and show you. Look around the neck area. We bring it down. It's our greenish tint, grayish tint. We bring it up, it turns red. So we wanna give it just a little bit of subtract background color to really neutralize it. I found 20% works really well for me. Now we're not seeing you know, any of that green line almost. We see maybe a little bit of a white outline here. That's okay. That's what Recover Edge Color is for. What it does is it takes the colors from around your subject and then it just amplifies all the colors and just stacks them inward. Makes it look kind of weird. Makes it look like a pretty cool effect if you want to go for something scary. If you do too high, but if you bring it back down, I like to put this just a little bit. So maybe 0.20 is a good number right there. And then that reduces that green line around our subject. Maybe in some areas you'll see a little bit of the green line, but that's okay. You can mess with all these numbers. Of course, this is going to be different for everybody, but this is just what works best for me. So we end up playing it. That looks really good. Well, let's see what that looks like with something behind us. You can see we are just keyed in. If you're playing it, you can see a little bit of stuff around the side happening, like right around the shorts area, and that could be from too much gain. So we go down to our green screen and bring our gain down just a little. You'll see it recovers a little bit in our shorts. Now again, I just want to clarify, this is going to be different for everybody, but I just wanted to show you how to use it because when somebody drag and drops chroma key on here, they're going to see a lot of options that may not know what to do with them. So now you know what each thing does. The best thing to do if you forget is just drag it all the way forward and drag it all the way back and then you'll see what effect it has on your footage. But if you followed all these steps, you now know how to make yourself have a really awesome key. And there you have it. You now know how to key out your subject and have the best cleanest key possible using the Chroma Key plugin in Vegas FX. I hope this tutorial helped you out and you learned something. And if it did, maybe shoot a subscribe and like down there because that'll really help me out. Again, I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers. I'm really close to doing that. And you know, that's my current goal right now. If you want to support the channel, you can do that too. Links in the description below, scrapyardfilms.com forward slash support. So thanks again for watching everybody. I'll see you all in the next video. And I also want to thank all of my scrappers, especially my super scrappers, LMC, HPL Gamers, and Walter Heenan.